I'm excited to, uh, that everyone could could join today. Uh, I, I'm interested. I, I, I'm hoping that you get some value out of this uh, and, and hearing my thoughts around what toolbox talks are within your company organization. Um, it's something that I've been looking into for the past 14 months or so. And every time that I discuss my findings and the, and the topics, uh, you know, with with anybody at that at this point in time, um, they're always intrigued as to the findings that I've that I've been able to locate and and just what kind of impact this can have on your entire workforce just by simply a you know a toolbox talk, which is something that most people are re relatively familiar with. Um, I talk from talk to people from from utilities to electrical. Uh, companies to excavations into uh, you know general contracting, uh, even insurance at this point in time, and they they all are very much aware of what a toolbox talk is, uh, but they're not exactly sure about the impact that it can have on an entire workforce when you when you do them um, uh, effectively. And so, what I've been looking into and 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 talking about for the past little while. I'm going to share with you guys over this, uh, and I hope that you can get some value out of it. So I'm Ryan Queering, uh, co-founder and CEO of City Tech Software. I'm passionate about solving problems. I just I love to to sit and think and uh, and figure out how we can apply technology into solving problems. My my background is electronic systems engineering, and uh, I ended up co-founding uh, Safety Tech in 2014, but that was after about 14 years of working within uh, the functional safety engineering and risk analysis uh, uh, sector uh, for oil and gas and for sulfur and primarily uh, natural resource processing. Um, so that's that's kind of where, where I'm coming from. Um, but the thing that I think that really drives me towards a passion for safety is when I was young, my, my dad was injured uh, at a meat packing facility. He was loading uh, pigs onto the back of a truck, and uh, the the lift ended up failing for some reason, one one way or another. I was really young, so I don't know the the details of the the nuance of the story, but um, it's kind of irrelevant anyway. But but Dad was instructed, you know, at being a, a 24 year old man, uh, he was instructed to just load the pigs manually, just pick them up, put them on the truck. Get the, it was more important to meet the timelines at that point in time than to try to fix the lift, and so. Being, you know, um, I, I would, I suppose he, uh, at that point in time, was ignorant to the fact that this wasn't safe, uh, just due to education levels and, and safety culture in general. Uh, he started to do it, um, and it just took, you know, after some time, it just took one uh, slightly heavier pig that he had to load in, and it ended up uh, compressing his his lower back, the vertebrae in his lower back, and, and he uh, fell down. Um, injured, and that that has had an impact on on my family on uh, for the past 35 years, and and so um, I just I can I can see the the, the impact that the, sm the slightest injury can have on any family, any anything at all, and you know that the pain of of having to deal with that uh, and and re-injury, uh, let alone with dealing with workers' compensation on a regular basis, is just something that I wouldn't wish on anyone, and so I'm trying to do anything that I can. Um, to ensure that this doesn't happen uh, to, to more people, or, or that we're taking steps to, to prevent this, these types of things, these injuries. That brings us to safety tech. You know, our our mission is uh, is to support workplace safety by simplifying these mandatory processes that do occur, um, engaging the workers in a, in a positive safety culture, but not just that, but also bridging that into the management portion and into the regulatory authorities to make sure that they're they're uh, in, a, in a positive state of mind when they're interacting with you, and then reducing the carbon footprint. Of course, uh, you know climate change being top of mind for for a lot of people and, and being uh, you know a hot topic at this point in time. But uh, simply by removing paper, you know, a really easy way to uh, to impact the the carbon footprint. Um, what we found was that you know workers in the field today using antiquated processes just don't feel like safety is really about them. Um, Craig and I uh, both worked with the with the workers at the field level. Craig managed them directly, and was cast, constantly battling field workers, uh, trying to get them to to properly work within the safety program, the safety policy, the safety system that he had built up and 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 was implementing. Uh, the conclusion was that he found workers didn't feel like safety was for them. They felt that it was for the company or for the government. Um, they didn't 
feel like they were protecting themselves. They felt like they were signing off on liability waivers, uh, trying to pass off liability uh, from the workers or from the, the companies onto the workers itself. And so we, we're out here now trying to, to change that stigma around what safety is. Um, with that, let's we'll get into the agenda. So we're going to start off to cover the, the next 40 minutes. We're going to cover these topics here where uh, I'm going to talk to you about what a toolbox talk even is. Um, We'll discuss, you know, what what talks, uh, how toolbox talks feed into larger measurements of safety um, with leading indicators and how that impact uh, looks like on lagging indicators. We'll go into how a toolbox talk can play a significant role in your overall safety culture. I'd like to acknowledge next the administrative burden that goes into building, delivering, tracking, proving compliance to toolbox talks, because I'm sure many of you are aware uh, exactly how much effort goes into uh, administering toolbox talks to your workforce. Um, and I'm gonna dive into how we're approaching the solution to removing that burden, um, and how we can make an impact on, on your overall uh, health in, in general, or your mental health as well, with, without uh, having to spend so much time worrying about the content, the, the, the making the content look pretty, uh, setting it out to your workforce, and then trying to figure out how to get that information back as to who's interacted with this content. And at the end, we're going to have a Q&A, so feel free, drop some questions in the uh, the chat box, and we'll uh, we'll try to uh, approach them as we as we come up to it. Okay. Um, with that, what are toolbox talks? Uh, a toolbox talk, sometimes called safety meeting or a safety brief, is an informal on-site meeting where all workers meet at the beginning or the end of the day, workday or shift. Um, these meetings are typically just 10 to 20 minutes. They're not long. They don't have to be long. And they cover a variety of topics but are centered around safety at the work site. Uh, toolbox talks give workers the heads up on any particular safety protocol that needs to be followed on site as well as any tips for working under specific weather conditions or specialized equipment that they may be using that they you know need to be refreshed upon or any other variables that of their work. Like it's uh it's something that that you're just allowed to to work within to make sure that safety is top of mind and that uh, if there's any any triggering events that, that you can pull out, uh, you're allowed to enable that. Um, you know, COVID-19 is, is kind of a, the perfect example of what a toolbox talk could cover recently here, where, you know, we're trying to, to push social distancing. We're trying to make sure that people aren't spreading this infection um, or, or or working on uh, on bettering themselves and making sure that they're not getting sick themselves. And if we all kind of, the, the key takeaway from that is if we're all, uh, thinking that we're infected and we're we're trying to prevent the spread of it, uh, then we'll all do our jobs at that point in time. Um, I recall sitting on these meetings with my peers, where my manager would stumble through some prepared document that uh, his manager or her manager would give to them. Um, you know, they <laughs> to be honest, I could tell that they really didn't care about it. It was just the job that they were doing, and uh, and they were just told that they had to deliver the talk. The workers had to sit in on it, and uh, you know, these talks were not engaging at, at, at this point in time. And you could just tell that everyone was just there because they had to. Um, making these talks engaging is something that I've learned is a necessity. Uh, you know, <laughs> these toolbox talks, they help, they, they help champion workers at, at the worker level, at the field level, into uh, collaborating when it comes to talking about safety topics and, and championing them into being safety leaders within your workforce. So, this is the significant slide that I to, 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 to mention, and this is the one that raises a lot of eyebrows. Um, the information that baffles people when I tell them, by simply increasing the frequency of your toolbox talks in the field, it can have a direct impact on your overall safety culture, your total recordable incident rates, and your days away, um, uh, you know, restricted or, or transferred. Um, these companies that perform toolbox talks daily instead of monthly have noticed that we've been able to correlate uh, that there's an 85% decrease in your, your total recordable incident rate. And that's a massive Im impact on your overall uh, company. We'll, we'll get into what that looks like from a dollar value a little bit later on for uh, for the, the workforce as a whole and, and aggregate for North America. But uh, starting each day with a toolbox talk it only reinforces the general safe work expectations and obligations. And more importantly, it demonstrates to the workforce, the importance of putting safety first every single day. 
and that is a, a signal from management to workers to say that look we're we're making a valiant effort into making sure that you stay safe and informing you about the topics that you need to be informed about um and that's that when when workers see that signal uh, they start to prioritize safety. It's a different thing than when you slough it off once a month or, or every two weeks. Now, administrative burden aside, uh, we'll, we'll get into how we can solve that. But when you see a daily toolbox talk coming out and it's prepared and the, the content exists, it's a significant impact on your workforce. Um, and really, can you brief your employees on safety too much? I don't think that there's ever... Uh, a time when there's a negative effort effect by conducting a daily toolbox talk or a daily safety meeting um it actually ends up being uh, you, you turn your workforce into a more productive workforce into a uh a smarter higher quality workforce uh over time and so we'll get into how that looks as well i like to think of toolbox talks as mini training sessions for your workers a successful toolbox meeting should have workers walking away feeling like they've learned something valuable that they, that, they didn't, that they didn't know before. Um, it can be tricky because everyone learns differently and they all have different life experience. So when building a toolbox talk and delivering it to your field, you need to have half a dozen solid points to be made in order for the workers to walk away with something that sticks. And this is how I believe it needs to be in order to create uh, side conversations about it, to create some momentum uh, after the meeting as well. Think about it. When you learn something new, you talk about it. Um, you 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 tell people uh, about this new piece of information. You you also want to test it, apply it, um, use it in your life to make something better. Uh, when you learn something new, that's when your workers openly discuss safety during coffee breaks or lunch. Um, it creates a safety culture that can possibly create you know you, you couldn't possibly create through enforcement. Uh, in, enforcement is one piece of the safety puzzle, but if you can get engagement, uh, you're way ahead of the curve on that point. If you're providing values to your workers through toolbox talks, the workers will give back to you tenfold through increased safety culture and, and side com site camaraderie as well. Um, something they can rally around and, and all get behind. I always like to say that it's a good day if I've learned something new. And I think that applies to most people. When, when you're engaging your workers and you're teaching them, uh, it's something that they can get behind and, and believe in. Uh, before we get right into the the, the real guts of the webinar itself. Uh, this is going to do a quick poll just to find out, you know, where we're sitting, um, get some feedback. There's no wrong answer. Uh, just want to know, you know, how often do the attendees perform toolbox talks? Uh, is it daily, weekly, monthly, bi-weekly, um, quarterly, whatever that looks like. Uh, you know, this is something that we all strive to, to do. Uh, it's something that we, we've all learned to do at some point in time, um, but there's really the frequency is is not important for the poll itself. I just want to see where we're all at. Um, some industries mandate monthly toolbox talks, some don't. Uh, when I talk to prospects and clients about it, I hear mostly monthly and weekly frequencies, which seems to be normal and understandable. Um, the amount of effort, again, going into the creation of these toolbox talks is, is baffling. And I think uh, just if you started to measure it, it would be, it'd be something that would it's a real eye-opener for management um, and government regulators as, as a whole. So how are we looking on the poll? We just have a few more um, uh, coming in. So I think I'll close the poll in just a minute from now. Okay. Um, yeah, when we, uh, when we close the poll, I'm going to talk about why the frequency matters um, and and give some some parallel examples of what practically what humans need just in general um, as a reminder to <laughs> to maintain uh, some sort of consistency or even to develop habits and so um, it's more about psychology than anything um, at that point in time so it's it's quite interesting when you start to break it down what what ends up happening. Uh, when you perform toolbox talks at a higher frequency. Uh, yeah, I was quite quite amazed when I first read this here. So yeah, most most people are weekly uh, at this point in time. That's good. That's uh, that's fantastic. You're further ahead than than most. Um, quarterly, monthly, 
and some are daily. That's phenomenal. So I'd like to hear uh, your feedback for the ones who answered. Uh, I'd like to hear your feedback on on what you think of uh, the daily toolbox talks, or if you if you have your workers come up with topics, or if you push out prepared toolbox talks to them. It'd be uh, be great to understand. All right. Oh, on that note, there we go. So why frequency matters. Um, I'm going to revisit a quote here from one of the members of the Associated Builders and Contractors Union, where it stated, uh, starting each day with a toolbox safety talk not only reinforces those general safe work expectations and obligations, but more importantly, it demonstrates to the workforce the importance of putting safety first each day. When you perform a task every single day, you get pretty good at it. For example, I'm learning piano right now. Uh, and I've noticed that if I play 20 minutes a day, my fingers move the way I want them to. It's like muscle memory. Um, I don't struggle to get the keys to be soft or sharp. My, my feeling is there. I can put on a new song and play within a single 20 minute session and then refine it. And after a week, it starts to sound pretty good. Uh, enough that I would be able to play it in front of somebody. Similar parallels can be drawn to exercising or school or educational classes. <laughs> I went to a technical school uh, for electronic system engineering and I remember we had a business class that we took once a week and that class was viewed as an absolute joke. Um, once a week we had to go to sit through the, the, the an hour of fluffy non-technical, this is how we viewed it, fluffy non-technical uh, business lectures that had nothing to do with coding or developing printed circuit boards or microprocessor design. I didn't retain anything really from that class and, and I don't think anyone uh, in my class <laughs> who did either. Um, the only thing I recall was how bored I was, to, to be totally honest. Uh, and it's not due to a lack of content. And in fact, you had technical students in, in a business class. Uh, it was the frequency. It was that once, it was one hour per week that we would spend doing it. And there wasn't enough time to actually accomplish anything. Um, people don't tend to prioritize something if they're able to easily forget about it in a matter of hours is what I'm trying to say. So if you're able to perform a daily toolbox talk or a safety briefing that educates your workers and leaves them with something that they've learned and retained, it highlights how important these meetings are and engages them in it. Now, keep in mind that there's a content piece here as well. You can't deliver the same talk over and over and over again because uh, that'll get break, broken down and, and get mundane and, and kind of boring at that point in time. It's difficult to learn something new when you hear the same things over and over again. But Demonstrating to your workers that management are on board with the 10 to 20 meeting, the 10 to 20 minute meeting uh, every single day about a specific topic helps them realize that it's legitimate and is viewed as important. It prioritizes those safety briefings and, and that, that education piece is, is so important that if your workers feel like they're getting value out of these talks uh, and that they're engaging and that they're, they're able to, to pull nuggets out of them, uh, you know, one of the dozen that you want to put in there, one of the half dozen that you want to put in there, uh, then you're going to create a, a camaraderie and you're going to get that that overall uh, transparency and uh, and engagement from your field workers. It's it's phenomenal the impact that it can have. Now, I'd like to <laughs> recognize that it's, it's very easy to say, uh, perform a toolbox talk daily. And you're all thinking that, well, how are we supposed to do that? <laughs> it's like a full time job performing a weekly or monthly toolbox talk schedule, let alone a daily. And so searching for and, and digging up new content to deliver for your workers, preparing it into a digestible format, like a printout or an email PDF, ensures that it's being discussed on site, you know, and trying to get that feedback from your field workers uh, and that they understand the content, not just that they are sit there and, and are in, in, in listening to it, but that they also understand it. Um, that's 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 a full-time job, and let alone all the other pieces of your job that you need to perform as well, right? So. While this is just a single piece of your safety system that you need to manage it, and I and I totally understand that it's it becomes a, a massive burden to attempt to do everything your your let alone have LHAs and all your other documentation that you got to fill out on a regular basis. So it becomes a daunting task for anyone to perform, even without the rest of your job. What ends up happening is you ultimately end up failing at it um, simply because you don't have enough hours in the day to get everything done. And so you'll ramp up this initiative to do a daily toolbox talk and after a couple of weeks it becomes unmanageable <laughs> at that point in time. And you've 
you ended up neglecting a lot of the other parts of the job as well. And so while we're not trying to set everyone up for failure or, or get people um, working to a, a goal that they can't ever achieve, that's not the point. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we're just recognizing the, the amount of effort, the sheer amount of effort that goes into this. And uh, we're going to try to help you out at the end of this uh, webinar with, with some keys um, and some guides in order to get you uh, through it. So um, I, I do feel like I need to mention that the companies that do perform daily toolbox talks on a regular basis, they, they typically have a dedicated team in place just to prepare toolbox talks and monitor toolbox talks and deliver toolbox talks and make sure that they're getting the feedback from the field about those toolbox talks as well. And so um, not everybody has the ability to have a full team dedicated to just toolbox talks and so uh, or content or or anything like that. The luxury doesn't exist for everybody out there. So yeah, while the uh, it's again, it's really easy to say just perform a daily toolbox talk. It's the, the the underlying work below it is is not easy. It's not not quick. But the impact, <laughs> this, this, if you, if you could tell your boss, your CEO, your CFO, your, your manager, wh whoever you work for, um, that you had a way to decrease unplanned work stoppages caused by occupational injury by up to 85%, and all you had to do was increase your, your frequency from monthly to daily, do, do you think that you would capture their attention? Um, does anyone know? Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna pose a question. I don't expect an answer. It's uh, I'll, I'll answer it in a little bit. But just to think about it, does anyone know how much money is lost every single year due to unplanned work stoppages caused by occupational injury just in North America? I'm gonna let that sink in. In North America alone, we lose as a whole in aggregate as industry as a whole. We lose 365 billion dollars every single year in lost productivity caused by unplanned work stoppages and it is just baffling why this problem isn't isn't larger and that we're not doing more to solve it um these these costs are are made up of uh, lost productivity insurance costs uh lost costs due to shutdowns um you know hitting your your workforce your your projects um delay penalties, uh, retraining new workers, uh, project schedule adjustments, and having to do extra work in your Gantt charts, your project management schema, just to make sure that you're you're able to calibrate and, uh, and react to unplanned work stoppages. Many companies don't keep a solid record of just how much a single minor injury costs them directly, let alone all the indirect costs that start to spiral out of control after an incident actually occurs. Uh, OSHA, there's an online calculator you can go and take a look at. OSHA estimates that a single minor injury, such as a sprain, costs an employer on average $31,000 just for that minor injury, plus another $34,000 in indirect costs that are not really associated directly to the injury itself. Um, that is huge. And if that employer happened to be like a design build firm, for example, with maybe a 3% profit margin, they need about a $2 million project on top of everything in order to make up the difference in cash flow. And that is just huge. That is significant, so significant that I, I can't, it just baffles me uh, that, that we're not doing more to try to prevent injuries and, and, and that more money isn't going into this problem to solve it in general. Um, the cost of it is just staggering. And so anything that we can do to reduce injuries should be prioritized number one. And this is a, a really simple, way to do it and so if, if you can just look at your workforce and identify where you fit on this graph here uh, you can see that the biggest jump is monthly to daily but uh, there's still significant impacts from from bi-weekly and weekly to daily uh, as well now we'd all like to do more um, and I'm positive that everyone on this webinar in fact is uh, is wanting to do more um, this is just ingrained in us you know as safety people safety managers safety professionals uh, anything that we can do to ensure the safety of our colleagues, it's, it's, it's a given. Um, nobody goes to work wishing ill on a coworker. Uh, similarly, you know, nobody goes to work with the expectation that they're going to be injured today. But while we all like to do more, it just seems like an impossible feat. You're already overworked. You're overwhelmed trying to fight three uphill battles. You're trying to get worker buy-in. You're trying to get, you know, you're answering uh, authorities' calls or regulators' calls. Uh, 
try to deliver the documentation that they're looking for. Plus, you need to constantly show how you deliver value to your, to your organization. Um, and and w when you're burdened with administration, uh, it's very difficult to, to highlight just how much value you bring. So I feel like this is where we're really able to help and, and step up uh, and give you guys the power that you need in order to deliver the results that you're looking for. The power of innovation at this moment in time is, is amazing. Um, you can set up an initiative, put it on auto autopilot so that you can check it when you have time, make the corrections you need to along the way, and having a system to automate the collection of information allows you to put it do as much work as you possibly can in parallel with all your other systems that you're putting in place. Um, you're allowed to set up an initiative, deploy it, have the, the data system, the systems collect the information while you deploy the next initiative and, and so on and so forth. And in this webinar, I'd like to say that the attendees um, happen to be, you know, we're, we're in the middle of a, a pandemic, just during the COVID-19 pandemic, we're, we happen to be offering our system, our workplace health analysis dashboard uh, for absolute no cost, just to uh, register, register and, and start using it. Um, that includes our content delivery system, which I'm gonna get into in the next couple of slides here as well. But uh, I feel like it's part of our mission. It really ties into our mission to allow anyone to utilize a system in order to inform and track users within their workforce and do so without needing to worry about the commercial implications. And so I just wanted to make this as a statement for anyone who's, who's attending, uh, you get to, to use the, our, our platform for absolutely no cost uh, while we're going through this pandemic and uh, you're trying to figure out how to work remotely. Um, so at the end of the webinar here, we'll, we'll give you some links and you also get a follow-up email from us uh, Kind of detailing what we're uh, what we're offering. Um, we're also sending an email with a link to our ultimate guide to Toolbox Talks uh, to the, all the topics that we we've kind of aggregated. Um, we've built a, a yearly guide, so 365 daily Toolbox Talk topics uh, with short descriptions uh, in a white paper that we're going to be delivering. Um, to allow you to re relieve the burden, so you don't got to think about what you need to do and, and put the hours in in order to build your content and set it all up, you can just deploy it and let, and let it run itself. Um, these talks can be added to our content delivery system in any media format as well. Uh, you, can, you can record yourself talking about it and then push it out there in video format. You can stick it on a PDF and push that out there in video format and track exactly who's engaging with the content, which is probably one of the most uh, difficult pieces through email and paper print uh, in order to figure out who's digesting this information and understanding it. Um, and so any particular size of, of content is, is irrelevant and the type doesn't really matter either. So we'll, uh, we'll get into that now. So our content delivery system, uh, you'll be able to add in documents or media that you would like to send for a mandatory reading. We found that the use of our system recently has been to update uh, workforces about the COVID-19 coronavirus. Uh, this has been one of our, our, our clients' uh, highest used uh, features right now at this point in time, where um, they're notifying people about washing your hands, uh, you know, how to, how to effectively wash your hands, how do you work uh, while maintaining social distancing rules, your six foot spacing, um, you know, what are the new rules, new, new safe work practices around uh, residential construction where you're, you're building homes, uh, how do you manage uh, independent trades entering the home doing their job leaving and then making sure that you come in to a safe work environment where you're not going to be contaminated or um, acquire a virus uh, unknowingly uh, disinfecting everything how do you set up barriers how like, all of this stuff is all super uh, valid content that should be pushed out to all your workers to inform them about exactly what they need to do and expect when they arrive on site In order to create a document in the system itself, and uh, if you guys register, you'll you'll get to to get a feeling for this yourselves. Um, just quickly, simply click Add New in the top corner, input the name of the piece with a description. Uh, you can tag it with anything that you want to track it by. If it happens to be COVID-19 related, you can do that. If it happens to be uh, safe work practice related, you can do that. You can tag it with whatever tag you'd like to create, and it'll track it that way as well. Select your audience. Uh, it's important because you can have, if you have different divisions within your organization, say you have an industrial and a residential and a commercial division, you can push out separate content to each piece uh, or to each specific uh, workforce in order to make it relevant, a little more relevant for them. So you can highlight your audience, uh, 
and then you just drag in your files and it'll upload it into uh, into the, the, the management system, the delivery system, in order to uh, send it out to your workforce. Um, once you've added everything and you click submit, it will summarize how many individuals are going to receive this content. And if that all looks good, you can just hit confirm and away you go. Once you've pushed that out there and, uh, and you start to track it itself, you can start to see who's engaging with it, how much time they're spending on the content itself, um, who hasn't opened it. More importantly, it's probably the, the number that you're looking for as well. So here happens that we happen to be in a, a toolbox talk for work week four. This is in February. Uh, 2020 that we pushed out to uh, to all of our workers and you can see that Randy spent five five and a half minutes reading this piece of content so we, we can understand from that that he probably digested the information um, and completed it he signed off on it as well uh, Josie however only spent 15 seconds so there's a slight disconnect between the amount of words on that document and uh, the time spent and so you can you can likely try to pull out your uh, offenders of uh, people who, who don't actually digest the information that you're looking for uh, in order to uh, to re-engage them, to, to work. It helps you prioritize who to champion in the field, uh, who to spend time on the phone with, who, who to, when you are in the field, uh, who do you need to go and talk to uh, and explain why safety is important. It really, really helps you just prioritize your day itself. So, uh, more about our offering here so simply visit safetytech.io slash COVID-19 um, click on the sign up for free button register it and and start to use it um, it's really really easy really simple uh, to get going on it it's no charge it's forever free uh, uh, for the COVID-19 um, self-assessment dashboard uh, you get up to three safety forms to use it and the content delivery system which happens to be in beta right now we just we wanted to release it uh, early just to get people engaged. And, and again, we're trying to solve this problem of this new new work-life balance, this, this new working from home um, scenario that we happen to be in and how we can help the industry um, make it through all of this together. Uh, check your email as well for our ultimate guide to Toolbox Talks. Uh, includes 365 Toolbox Talk topics to cover you for each day of the year. Uh, and this is gonna be supplemented by a, uh, a PDF later on. Um, with a summary and uh, and actual PDFs for for each toolbox talk itself. So uh, we're working on that. Um, but in the meantime, the the topics are existing out there right now at the link below. And uh, again, we're we're not asking for any commercial details. We don't need you to go to try to get approval um, for purchasing something at this moment in time. Right now, you just need to use a tool and you need to use it now. Uh, and so that's that's what we're trying to accomplish. And then this kind of ties into the fact that safety just happens to need data. Uh, we are a data platform first. Um, we're just happen to be solving the safety problem. And safety has forever been plagued by antiquated processes and a lack of buy-in. And, and we're, we're only now starting to recognize the importance of safety. I would say within the past five, 10 years is when safety has been kind of prioritized at this point in time, where it's not a cost center. Uh, safety is an investment. Uh, we just need to prove it. We just need to show the information about what that means. And so, uh, you know, I'm sure everyone on this call or everyone on the webinar has felt the, the pain of paper, Excel, and, and emails trying to locate leading indicators and track them using these processes that existed up until now. Um, but with our platform, it's just inherently uh, built into the, into the system itself. And so, what we're what we're what I find is that we're able to prove within about four weeks time, we can show you exactly where safety breaks down in your workforce. Uh, we can ramp up your productivity by removing the administrative burden by up to six times, six X. Uh, we can decrease incidents by up to 85%. And that's simply by engaging uh, in a new narrative around safety. Um, you're able to do more with less, uh, continue to, to, to bring value to your organization. And then, you, Finally, make safety a revenue generator. Show that it, it impacts production. Show that it impacts quality. Show that it impacts timelines um, and prove it. So with that, just a, a quick summary. You know, Toolbox Talks are a great way to engage your workers in safety. Uh, they're able to learn something new every day. Witness the dedication to safety of your organization and that a, that a company happens to have as well. And so when you're, when you're able to, to go full circle and, and Get your workers talking about safety 
independently throughout your, your entire organization without having to enforce anything, without making them do it. They, they just they learn something, they want to try it. Um, you'll get engagement that way a lot uh, far sooner than uh, than trying to, to push it down their throats, so to speak. Um, we've learned that the impact of toolbox talk frequency can have on incident rates, uh, which is staggering. Uh, I still am uh, in awe of how much of an impact it can make. Um, you know, the increased frequency is desired, uh, but you know, with with the existing systems, it, it can be very difficult. And you know, just acknowledging that. Um, and I, I encourage everyone to uh, go in, sign up, and uh, and use the system for for no charge, uh, and just provide us feedback. Make sure that uh, if you're able to get any extra touch points with your field staff uh, through the system, just making that extra connection can uh, can bridge the gap between the field and the office as well.